back folks, this is Joe with Steel Blade Woodworks. And today is gonna to be the last video of the Avid CNC build. This is gonna be just a basic uh, overview, kind of give you some of the things that I found while putting this uh, four by four CNC together. Uh, unfortunately, the last footage of the electronics and the wiring and installing the software, all that was lost. Uh, we had a hard drive failure and it's gone. Nothing I can do about it. The only thing I'll say about that is Avid provides some real good step-by-step -step instructions and just follow them and you'll get through it. I did, you can do the same thing. Um, uh, but it is what it is, it's happened. I have now made some changes to avoid that in the future as we move forward in this shop build and everything else uh, that we're gonna bring to y'all. So <clears throat> one of the first key things that a viewer brought up to me and I missed it in the instruction and this is very important, are these linear bearing blocks. Uh, I'm not gonna take this out of the package, but when you're installing these on the gantry riser and on the uh, active plate, it's very important to, to pay attention because I missed it in the, in the uh, instructions. So I'm gonna bring in this close here. So at, there is an orientation to these. And um, I went back in there and I saw how I missed this, but just so you know, on these blocks, one side is just solid black. The other side has a strip of, of this metal or this mounting surface. It is very important that if you're gonna orientate these, that this metal portion is up on every one because when it sets into the slots, it will make a difference. If you have the metal up on this side and the metal down on that side, there is a little difference in there and it will um, cause, a, cause it to be out of whack. Uh, I've already went back and changed mine. Uh, I, I don't remember the guy's name. It's been many videos back but I really do appreciate him seeing that and, and pointing that out to me so I can tell y'all. So hopefully you watch this before you start putting your machine together and you don't do what I did and have to take everything apart because once that's done, you can slide each bearing out individually, but it is some work. So if you can avoid it, be good. So <clears throat> that was one of the main things that I wanted to point out Another thing is on these linear rails here, when you're tightening the bolts, you don't have to kill it. You can feel it. And if you go too hard, you're gonna break it. And you can feel that bolt stretch and it's gonna snap and it's gonna cause a lot of issues. You're gonna have to do some work to get it out of there, especially if they break down in the middle. So that being said, be careful when you do that. Other than that, everything is straightforward. I did not have any issues putting this together. Some of the tools that I will recommend that I thought helped me uh, make this process a lot easier. One is, now you can use a drill. Uh, this is a, a battery operated ratchet wrench. I picked this up at Harbor Freight and any of these tools in here, I'm not affiliated with them. This is all purchased with my own money. So uh, this worked out real good. This is a personal preference as far as the anti-seize goes. The uh, Loctite, this is the one you wanna get. And I would, it took me a full two, I bought two of these and I have, I still have some left. So, uh, there is gonna be some sections in there that Avid is gonna require you to Loctite. Some of the other areas I used them as I thought for my personal reasons that it needed it, uh, even though they didn't 
require it. Uh, but like I said, self-preference, do what you want to do. <clears throat> I ordered these. These are a must. Ball knows they tell you to get them in the instructions. Get them. You're going to need them. Um, and these are just a straight uh, Allen wrench. And I would suggest I used them both. So these more than these, but we got them. This is for a router, a regular router. I went ahead and got it in case in the future we're doing some runs. That's something goes wrong with the spindle. I can take that off, either send it off to get it fixed or buy another one. But in the meantime, I could keep operating with the regular router. So uh, I forgot what this costs. Not very expensive, but I have it on hand in case something goes wrong, I can keep operating. <laughs> Another thing that they're gonna suggest is this little kit that you see right here. And these are consumables and the rack and pinion gears. It comes with three sets or three. It brings um, a couple of belts and these are the inserts for the linear bearings for the grease and it brings you four bearings. Uh, this is good to have. Like I said, they're consumables, they're gonna wear out. And if you're in the middle of a big run, it's good to have this stuff on hand. You can keep going. As you can see, I've been running stuff. I've been making things, uh, using it for um, storage items here in the shop. And as I build out my dream shop here, I'm utilizing the CNC to help me make certain things. Um, it works flawlessly. I, I haven't had any issues uh, other than, well, there hasn't been. It's just myself trying to get used to the software and doing it right. Have I messed up? Sure, we messed up many a time, but it's all learning and uh, you know, it's once you get a hang of it, there is some more difficult stuff that I haven't figured out yet, but we're working at it. Uh, this dust boot here, another thing that you can get on Amazon, it works real good. Uh, I kind of, uh, you know, made this up and this pipe pulled onto the Z axis by some uh, aluminum and we hold the pipe and then we have enough tube here to reach all four corners of the machine. This dust boot works very well. I haven't had any issues. The only time you're gonna lose suction is when you're off the uh, material a little bit and you're gonna get some dust. Other than that, it takes up everything. And if you're interested, that's a Harbor Freight converted over to a two-stage. There's a video out. I'll put it up here for this dust collector modification. And that two horsepower for this is perfect. It works very good. So if you're interested in that, go take a look at that. Uh, like I said, there was no issues putting this together uh, other than problems that I caused myself, tightening bolts too hard breaking them, uh, so just keep that in mind when you're doing it. Another suggestion is once you get the frame built, put it in the area that it's gonna go. Once you start getting everything else on, on it, this thing is heavy and it's gonna be tough to move it and you're gonna be jarring things around. So I would suggest before you square the frame up, put it where you're gonna be and then get your squareness and your level. To tell you the truth, this thing was right on the money at this, when I, once I put the frame together. It was square, didn't have to do anything. That was very impressive. We did order uh, some more key nuts and stuff. So once we did the cable routing, <clears throat> I was very meticulous and wanted it to look clean. 
So we got some hose, uh, some wire loom, some other T nuts, and some other um, <clears throat> the plastic strap holders where you can put it in the extrusion and then put a zip tie through it. Uh, they only send you a few, so we ordered extra. And uh, I have all those sizes and stuff, and I'll try to get them below in the description. Uh, and as I'll try to put a bunch of this in the, in the description with item numbers so you know where to go and pick them up. Um, Abbott will probably suggest these. Go ahead and get them. This is a starter bit set from Whiteside. So I've been using this. I haven't ordered anything else other than surfacing bit. Uh, that's the only other bit that I've bought. I've been learning with this those set of bits. And if you keep everything modest, when you start running it, you should be okay. Um, knock on wood, I have not broke a bit yet. But then again, I take it slow and I ease into it and you can tell by the harmonics what when you're cutting, if you're putting that machine or that bit or that spindle into strain. My suggestion when you're first starting off, take it easy. You can tell right away if the bit is burning the wood, that you need to speed it up either. And, and these are just things that you're gonna have to figure out. There's a lot of people suggesting and you can follow that as a baseline. But a lot of this is going to be you putting the time in and running it. And you'll know, okay, I need to speed the spindle up or speed the, sp the speed of uh, your inches per minute to take away that burn. It's just, it's learning. It's a learning curve. I hope that you found all these videos helpful. If y'all are getting the CNC from Avid, um, I haven't had no problem with it. I highly recommend this. In fact, some of my friends have bought this particular machine and they are utilizing my videos. Um, other than that, I'm sorry that we lost the footage. It is what it is. We've made improvements for that as we move forward. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask them. Please like the videos, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to keep on following us through this uh, dream shop build out and uh, thank you for your time bye now